I'm going to tell you a story, but while I do, I want you to think for yourself if this doesn't sound like a modern day Marvel action film. There's a guy named Peter, and I don't mean Peter Parker. His name for now is just Peter. He's a soldier in a war. The war is long. He was wounded for the fifth time up to that point, which almost killed him. He's recovered. He wants to walk a distance to get away from the battle, to sit down and rest and have a drink at a bar, which he does. But when he does, nine of his sworn enemies come into the bar and see him. And the ringleader tells him to give up everything you have of value, including your silver boot buckles, which was given to Peter by a very trusted friend. What does Peter say? Does he give him up? Does he just say, whatever, uh, my rights don't matter? Or does he do this? Does he say, no, I'm not going to give you anything, but you're an authority, give it your best shot. After hearing that, the ringleader says, fine. He bends down, tucks his head and the sword to his hip, not looking. As he goes for the belt buckle on the shoe, the shoe's not there. Nor is Peter. Because Peter stepped back from the bar, pulled out a sword, and sliced his face and his neck, mortally wounding him, but not to the point quickly enough that the ringleader could not pull out his own pistol and shoot Peter, wounding him for the sixth time. What does Peter do? He doesn't stop there. He chases after one of them, catches him. Other seven flee away. He gets their horses, rounds them up, and takes them all back to camp. This is a true story of a man by the name of Peter Francisco, a man that George Washington himself said he was a giant of Virginia, a Hercules of the Revolution. Out him, we would have lost two critical battles, possibly the war, and with it, our independence. He was a one-man army, and Peter Francisco is the subject of today's Liberty's Heroes. But what makes Peter Francisco a fascinating American figure and more importantly, a Liberty's hero is not the fact that he was, let's say, six foot six, which he was, or 260 pounds, which he was, or the fact that he did unspeakable things, some of which were not quite true, but they were impressive nonetheless. No, none of that was what makes him a Liberty's hero. What makes him a hero is the fact that he was an immigrant from another land, came to this country, didn't complain, embraced Americanism, was able to sit in the church where Patrick Henry gave the speech, give me liberty or give me death. That's what makes him a liberty's hero because despite his upbringing, despite that he was kidnapped at five years old from the Azores Islands and brought to America and dropped off and picked up by strangers, the fact that he was able to establish himself with a trade, build up his muscles, and identify with the American dream early on makes him, in my book, a true American hero. And yes, you heard me right about Patrick Henry because it just so happened that Patrick Henry was the nephew of the man who adopted Peter. His name was Anthony Winston. And so it just made sense that the two of them in 1775 went to hear his nephew speak at the famous St. John's Church in Richmond. That was the speech where Peter heard, give me liberty or give me death. He was so enthralled, so inspired, so filled with patriotism that he wanted to join the Continental Army right then. However, Winston said, you know what? I know you're 6'6 and 260 pounds, but you're only 15 years old. You're too young. But a year later, in December of 1776, he allowed him to go fight. One of the most famous accounts of Peter Francisco during the Revolutionary War occurred here on March 15, 1781, at Guilford Courthouse in Greensboro, North Carolina. Just two days prior, George Washington had a sword made for him, custom, with a five-foot blade. It was this sword that he used in this battle to kill four men and be wounded severely. Legend has that he killed 11, but by his own account, it was only four. Nonetheless, he fought very bravely and nearly died. He was left for dead, only to be found by a nice 
Quaker who took him in and nursed him back to health. In fact, it was from this battle where Peter Francisco, after he was healed, marched his way back, tired and hungry and thirsty, to that bar that we mentioned earlier in our story. But there's so much more to the story of Peter Francisco. I encourage you to go out and see for yourself about this fascinating man. He was at every major milestone of the Revolutionary War. He was at Valley Forge, where he got injured, along with the Frenchman Lafayette. They became friends, very good friends. And he was at Yorktown to see the end of the war. He lived to be 70 years old, and he did many things up to that point for the cause. He was a man of faith and truly what we consider a liberties hero. My name is Kyle Suggs with the conservative take for Red Liberty Media. And if you'd like to support the channel, please check out the Patreon link in the show notes below.